I got something for you. Take it. Eat it. Eat lead. Ah. Hello, guys. Welcome to the six MCC assembly tutorial for Halo Reach. In this episode, we're going to be covering things like vehicle motion properties, how to swap out uh, child objects, or in this case, turrets, how to make the warthog fly like a banshee, and a little bit of quaternion rotations. So let's get started. Go ahead and open up assembly and load up your forge underscore halo map. And we're going to need a couple files for today. And first comes from vehicle tag, warthog, and then we're going to need the HLMT warthog, and then we're going to need the mode warthog. So you can see warthog.vehi.hlmt and .mode. And there's one more thing, the banshee tag under vehicles. So now, the first thing you can open is the banshee tag. We're going to be covering uh, motion properties first, in this case for vehicles. And if you have played around with vehicles, you've noticed that at the very bottom, there are a couple of property, what I call presets. And there's tank engine, engine motion, dropship, anti-gravity, jet engine, turret, helicopter, space fighter, all of these. And these are basically um, characteristics or um, kind of like a selection for what we want, how we want the vehicle to respond. And if you press I, it reveals account, address, and entry size. And if I press I on this one, this one is blank. So this one is basically nulled out when the count is zero and the address is zero x zero, which is important for later use. So if we want to have a warthog respond like the Banshee, we need to copy these values and then transfer them to the appropriate place. So I'm on the warthog ta uh, tag and now I have the actual selection. So I'm going to change my count to 1. We're going to change the address to the Banshees. And then we're going to see what happens. I can expand. And now the Banshee characteristics have carried over into this area. So now I'm going to poke that change. I'm going to spawn in a Warthog. And now this should supposedly, quotation marks, behave like a Banshee. But it doesn't. Why is that? Well, it's really simple. If you open up assembly, you'll notice that we also have engine motion properties that are in use. And let me go up here. And we haven't done anything to engine. So we have jet engine and then we have engine. So right now, engine is overriding the jet engine motion properties. So in other words, because this is still active, it will not allow what we want to happen to happen. So we're going to null that out. And remember how I said that 0x0 is basically a nulled out motion properties list? So now we have done that. And if we poke and we go back in game, we should see that our Warthog is now fine. And of course, we can change all of these vehicle characteristics. We can do things like uh, increase the speed, all of which can be located under the whoops, Warthog tag jet engine motion properties. Let's change the, uh, let's see, flying speed to 15. So now if we poke that, you'll see that we're flying a lot faster. We're flying like Harry Potter in the Harry Potter movies. So it's really cool. You can change deceleration, maximum speed, all of those things can be changed from the jet engine motion properties area. So I'm going to go ahead and get out. Whoa! And as you can see, it, it went a little crazy yeah anyways so now let's cover the second part of this tutorial turrets and child parent marker relationships and quaternions which are the worst thing to ever happen to mankind <sighs> okay so let's go back up to our warthog.vehicle tag and let's type in or actually we need to be in hlmt my bad and we can type in child and child object and it will take us right here which is where we want to be so anytime you want to swap out a turret you're changing a child object and for this case a parent would be something that is a placement or where is this going to be basically so for example the back of a warthog is a parent to the child in this case the child is the chain gun. So we can change the chain gun to anything basically. If I want it to be the scorpion cannon, 
and then I spawn in a Warthog. Well, now my Warthog is going to have the Scorpion Cannon. And now if you've watched any mod vehicles on YouTube, I mean mod videos on YouTube about modded vehicles, then you'll see this beast quite a bit. And that is how you do that one simple change. But let's say we want to do something a little bit more sophisticated. Maybe, just maybe, we want a game mode where we have a regular machine gun, a regular mounted machine gun in the back of a Warthog. Well, now we've done that. And as you can see, it behaves like a mounted machine gun. I can only turn 45 degrees to my, or 90 degrees to my left and 90 degrees to my right for only 180 degrees of motion. It's not like a full uh, rotating 360 degree chain gun. So now, let's say that we want our flying warthog to be limited only to a rear facing turret. Well, how do we do that? So if you'll go to the mode tag now, and you will scroll down until you see, well, nodes is a good indicator that you're getting there, but you're going to marker groups. And under marker groups, you'll see that there's 112 entries. And for the Warthog, I think it's close to 93. It's somewhere close to 93. It may be a little bit less. Okay, so it's 91. So you want to go to entry 91 out of 113, I think. And you're going to go right here. And you'll notice that translation X, translation Y, and translation Z are things that you've probably already messed with. But then you'll notice, uh, notice rotation I, J, K, and W. And I, J, K, and W, are is that's not a typical degree or radian adjustment. So you have to be very careful. Now, for me, I have to visualize this kind of stuff. I just can't learn something without seeing the actual effects. So you can go to websites that have an actual animation to see what this is equal to in terms of angles, or radians, or degrees, or anything like that. And you can see that a 9 degree turn is equal to, well, you'll see. Anyways, so I've messed around with this stuff a little bit, and I kind of have a feeling for what we're going to need to do, but I kind of want to show something to you. So let's say that, well, let's first, let me show you how it looks. So this is without changing anything under the render model tag, which is abbreviated dot moat. So that is without changing anything. Let's say we change I to zero. What happens? when we spawn in a new Warthog. Nothing. That's because no rotation is happening. Let's say we changed J to zero. What happens? So I'm going to delete these two, and I'm going to spawn another one that has J set to zero. So nothing is happening, and that's basically because this is the default position. So Z, I mean zero, in other words, is basically a default variable, or it's canceled out. Now, if I wanted to flip this, basically, I wanted to turn this turn around, then I can do that by selecting this number. And I can go either way. I can do make this a negative, or I can make this a positive. In this case, I'm going to go to 0.99. And now, you'll see that the turn is at 45 degrees. But it's not all the way back. So how do I do that? Well, you'll see rotation W. And rotation W has an effect on rot rotation K that basically makes this, uh, it, they kind of go hand in hand together. But now you'll see that the turret is facing that way. And now I've noticed that for this type, for this particular adjustment, I can make small uh, small adjustments in increments of 0.10 and it's fairly noticeable so if I go to 0.7 then you'll see that the machine gun is pointing uh, either left or right in this case I think it's going to be right just a little bit or not at all let me make sure I poked here you'll see that it is okay so I've encountered this problem, which can be fixed by changing it to 0.3. And now, there we go. So you see, the 0.3 basically acts as a space where it, this value cannot be. So now it has changed to uh, basically a limited area. So if we don't, let's say we want to have an emphasis on the driver side of a Warthog, where I can turn this Warthog. Well, then I would just have to go here. 
and that's fairly simple. So let me go back to how I want it. So 0.99 and 0, because I don't want anything negating this. I want to have the full back range as I can. And additionally, if you wanted this particular turret to, whoops, did not mean to get in that big boy. If you want this particular turret to be able to spin all the way around, well, you can do that in the turret properties. But this is what I want. Now there's one problem. My body is going through the frame of a warthog. So what I need to do is scoot this turret up just a little bit. And I can do that by using these values right here. So this is basically on a straight line how in either direction is this affecting the, uh, the, the placement of a child object. So if I was to place it at 0.5, it should now be closer to the front of the warthog. So let me spawn in something and you can see it's now much closer to the front of a warthog than it was before. In fact, it's ludicrously stupid where it's at. But if I set it to something like negative 0.9, it's going to be closer to the back. Now, obviously, that's way too much, and we're going to have... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, there's not a... F just, we're going to go over here. <laughs> and now you can see that it's back. I like that. And if I get in this turret, then I'll be able to operate it without meshing in to the Warthog frame. But it's too back because it's sticking off, and, well... We don't like stuff sticking off. So if I go to something like 0 0.65, negative 0 0.65, then I should find my happy medium. And there it is. The turret is now a little bit further back than center back, and the Spartan player model is not going into the frame, or if it is, it's not even noticeable at this point. And this is a level that I like. So as you can see, you can apply this, what I've covered in this episode, into many things. If you want to do this with a scorpion turret, you can do it with a scorpion turret. In fact, right now, I will do just that. I can change this to anything. And because we're only editing the child object placement, this will cut, uh, carry over into any uh, turret or any model that we place. Well, not in that case. But I can change it to, let's say a Wraith Mortar, which is located right here, and the turret will be placed backwards. And that is most of the time. So you can see this turret is placed backwards, and if I, whoops, if I shoot forward, I'm actually shooting behind me. So you can see, if I get right up here, I'm now destroying stuff behind me. Whoa. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this ludicrous video. I mean, I've covered some pretty insane stuff. Um, you can definitely have fun with all this. Uh, but if you want to do certain things, like the machine gun, where you're creating a mission where you're escaping, then maybe this is relevant to you. And I hope it is. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and that wraps it up for episode 6 of the tutorial series. If you have any questions about assembly, then check the description below. I'm including a frequently asked questions document in which some of your questions may be answered, or post a comment and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you for watching.